once you started nurse training, I think your attitudes mm -hmm. changed. You you were in a position of education. You were talking about the conditions. You were talking about what should be happening. And you, visit, you went to other hospitals, general hospitals, sick children's hospitals, and you come back with ideas, I think. Yeah, and I think you were, you were in a position where you could legitimately um, mm. question practice. I mean, I can remember the charge nurse of a, a ward um, uh, going round with a bunting, you know, with so, so 12 indentations in it, and there would be 50 milligrams of Lergactyl, there'd be 100 milligrams of Lergactyl, Thyroidazine, phenobarbitone, no doubt as well. Um, it, no cardex, no recording system at all, and basically going round and popping mm. tablets into folks' mouths. Mm. Uh, you, know, so, and you actually think uh, that man was probably responsible for medicating upwards of 40 people mm. in that ward. He was doing it from memory. Mm -hmm. He hopefully was getting the right people at the right time. There was no record of whether he had or had not. Mm. There was no record from the pharmacy because the tablets came down mm. in huge big containers. Um, I remember, um, I think it particularly it was chlorpromazine, a legactyl syrup came, came down in, in huge, I would assume there were probably two or four litre bottles, they were huge big mm. bottles. And this was, this was decanted out. Um, uh, I just wonder how many medication errors were sure. made. Yeah, it was made obvious to me in several words as a student nurse that a measure of your ability was how quickly you could memorise the cardex <laughs> so you could dispense with it and just go on me giving the pills out without yeah. making any reference to it. Absolutely, uh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I was quite good at it. Were you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Managed to dispense with it very yeah. quickly. Uh, yes, I, I was, uh, I remember when I came back from um, doing my general training and, and I suppose you were more general disciplines so mm. there was a lot of uh, I, I took a lot of diligence in terms of doing and uh, I think it probably hurt some of my colleagues because I did take so long to do it because mm. I did have the temerity to actually make sure that people got clean dispensing cups mm. before they were medication was dispensed and that we signed off the medication as we went along mm. and so that was no doubt that was Alan Williamson was really lazy because uh, he's taking he's taking half an hour to do that medication mm. round I could do it in five minutes. Yep. I thought I'm, I'm remembering but the many wards used to use one spoon there was a, a jug of water and there was a spoon pour medicines into mouth yes. back same spoon all around maybe 40 people. Yeah, by the time the drug round was finished, that spoon, that, that water was probably about 40% drug mm -hmm. uh, with mm -hmm. all the dilution in it. Yeah. Did, you, did you ever directly question practices? Yes, I did. Um, it, was, it, was, it was quite a difficult thing to do, um, but I, I certainly did question practice. I, I, I questioned practice. I suppose I was, I was in more of a position to question practice, not as a student nurse, although I, I did do it on a, on, a, on a couple of occasions. Um, um, but certainly when I came back to work in the hospital, and technically I was a charge nurse, but I was a very, I was a young, still a young person. I was in my mid-twenties and went into this ward where it was, I remember it well, it was a back shift, so I was going in probably at one o'clock. It was a Tuesday afternoon and there was a ladies ward and, and there was um, some, one of the dormitories, it was probably about, and the dormitory would have slept 30 people, and there was, there was 16 ladies in bed. <clears throat> and I thought we'd had some outbreak of some ghastly disease and we were in for a heavy time, but no, this was standard practice, because Tuesday was enema day. Um, um, and I found that a bit strange, given that when you checked the bowel book, um, then in actual fact, some of the ladies that were in bed for enema day had had a bowel movement less than 24 hours before, so mm. we would have been really surprised if they would get any result at all. Mm. That was a strange practice, mm. another, another strange practice which I questioned. And, and I, I think many of the practices were, were put in place on the pretext of efficiency. Um, so, so thereby, if, if folk were being supported to get ready to bathe, then first of all, you were often bathing two individuals in a common bathroom with no privacy between the two baths. Um, and not only that, but if you went out into the corridor, there was another five or six people um, 
waiting, often naked, to get into the bath. Mm -hmm. um, and if you had time, you changed the water. Mm. Um, and it was, you know, cha change the water and wash the bath as well. Oh, we don't have time for that, Alan, no. we don't have time. Uh, I mean, the, the public, public nudity, I suppose, was, was one of the things that anybody coming into a world situation would uh, notice most. <laughs> Uh, you know, people were washed, changed if they were in, in continent in the living areas. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Um, and and hospital screens were were ornaments. Mm. Most of the time, the only reason a hospital screen was used is they used to put it across the front of the front door at night time. That mm. was a, that was about it. But mm. there's certainly, and there was no screening between the, the any of the beds. There was no there mm. was no screen between the beds. Um, I think there was screen later. I think there was screen later on. I remember. Probably no room for screen between the beds. Well, there wouldn't have been because it was a bit that part. Yeah, it was a bit that part.